ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Well, hello there, and welcome back to yet another FileMaker tutorial where we are going to learn more about FileMaker Pro. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at using JavaScript, JavaScript libraries, in fact, through an open source project called Carafe. Provided by Saliant, this is a wonderful way to integrate JavaScript directly into your own FileMaker solution. It takes a lot of the work out of your hands and basically just drops right in your file. Let's take a look and see how easy it is. All right, so the first place that we need to start is with the release of Carafe. This just happened just a while ago. In fact, I just got back from DevCon 2019 and was speaking with the developer or one of the developers, I believe there may be multiple, but Jeremiah Small over at Saliant has created this wonderful open source product. So you can see right here as I have on screen a, a JavaScript tool for FileMaker. Now what does that mean? It means that it's a deployment tool that helps you get pre-created bundles of JavaScript script code into your FileMaker solution. Now, if you're not a JavaScript developer, then you're not out there creating the charts and all of the other things, but you must be, at a very minimum, a JavaScript integrator. Now, you don't have to be a JavaScript developer in order to understand just enough in order to get things working within FileMaker using JavaScript. That's the reason for this video. So we're going to take a look at an example using Carafe and putting that into a FileMaker database in this video. Now this was released just in April uh, 17th of 2019. I spoke with Jeremiah just at DevCon. That just happened in August. They've already released a 2.0. They've got a little bit of traction, but this is going to come down to developers contributing to this particular project and making it work such that it takes a lot of the heavy lifting off of our hands. So let's take a look at what we've got. Uh, here, by the way, is the news of the Carafe 2.0 updates. That's what happened uh, right around the time that uh, DevCon did, August 14th, 2019. That was probably a day or a day before or after I was speaking with Jeremiah at the conference. Now, here is the website that you're going to be able to go to. It is Carafe, that's 1R, 1F, dot FM. Now, once here, you're going to be able to download these files. Um, browse bundles. It's in the rest of the development world, there are these things actually. Let's go to Node.js or uh, npm.js, I believe. There it is, npm.js. Okay, so a little bit of background. In the rest of the open source world, there are these repositories or there's these aggregations of repositories. A repository is a place where a developer submits and holds their own code and creates uh, updates and applies them. Then there's this aggregation of a bunch of these repositories, typically on GitHub, but on other open source available places where you can find all of these different libraries. Otherwise, having to go hunt and peck would be a real difficult thing to do. So for Node, there is, uh, let's see, YAML. Um, we've got JS YAML, Gatsby Transformer YAML, YAML. You can see that this particular website, this NPM JS, is an aggregation of all of the individual repositories that create modules for Node, which is a JavaScript development environment for the server side. So, Carafe has built somewhat their own repository, which is usually using just a content management system, maybe WordPress or something like that. But you can see uh, it doesn't have as much of a search feature. You've got the search feature right here, but you'd have to know what you're looking for. And this search probably works across the whole of the saline of the Carafe. Uh, actually, maybe it does work on a uh, website. Let's see if, uh, let's just put in chart. I didn't actually do this. There we go. Uh, search doesn't work too bad in order to have all of the different results come up. But for the most part, what we have is the ability to search through and look at what is available. But this is not the place where you're going to want to do this because you can do this directly within the FileMaker file that you download. The reason for this aggregation site over at uh, craft.fm is such that when things are added, it may not be in your copy of the FileMaker database, so you would have to find it here 
download it, and then import it into your copy of Carafe. That is, of course, unless and until Carafe gets some type of uh, system, if they don't already have it, where it just connects to this uh, aggregation site and just downloads all the new ones for you. I know that's going to be happening with an upcoming tool called Dropship uh, from FM Buddies, and um, it's basically the way that most things work. Here we work in FileMaker. It's nice to have it just import into FileMaker. So let's take a look at the Carafe files. Then let's walk through the process of adding one of these things and seeing how you integrate your FileMaker data into the JavaScript library. Talk about how much you need to know versus what you don't need to know in terms of the JavaScript and using these libraries and basically how you can make it work. So let's take a look at the files. All right. I've downloaded and it is the version 2.2. We can see right here that we have Carafe. This is the main file. And then right above that, we have the examples file where you're able to look at each of those uh, ex or some of the examples that are provided in Carafe. So first, let's take a look at the Carafe user interface. I'll explain it, how it works when you're working with your own FileMaker file. Then we'll take a look at some of the examples that we have in the example file. So I'll double click to open this. Right off the bat, we have a nice little JavaScript uh, intro there. And this is a great example of an integration of a web viewer where it's very difficult to define where the web viewer stops and where FileMaker starts. Here we have a nice card window. We've got get started and browse online. I'm going to give you all of the get started information so that you can uh, get these into your solution. Now what we're going to be taking a look at is actually this example right here, this button and dialog. This is one of the many different integrations that are currently listed. Now remember, this is a FileMaker file that simply has a listing of all of the different possible things that you can integrate into your FileMaker solution. Now these are JavaScript, which can be a combination of a JavaScript library created by somebody else somewhere out on the web and some additional code that is JavaScript or as well FileMaker, FileMaker script. You have to integrate your fields or your data into what's provided. So in this example, we can see right here on screen, I click this delete button and it flips up. All of this is within the web viewer right here. And then I click and you can see that it's calling a FileMaker script because this is clearly a FileMaker dialog. So I click OK. Now what we have to put into this configuration or into this code is the name of this button, delete, the name right here of yes, the prompt of this information, and this no. All of this information, everything that's in this dialog is in JavaScript. It can come from our fields, but we have to get it into the JavaScript so that the JavaScript can use it. And that's no different than integrating our data and doing whatever it is that we want to do. Now, the way that we get it out of this Carafe database and into our own solution is with this option right up here, deploy. This deploy option is going to give us a couple of options and we're going to walk through that in the rest of this video putting this button specifically into a FileMaker solution. So let's take a look. All right, so we need a file. I'm going to go up to the file menu. I'm going to choose the create new and I'm going to put that simply on my desktop. So we'll just call this uh, button. Really simple. And we'll save that and that will open up. Now, obviously we're going to need a web viewer. So we're going to put that on the layout first. We're going to layout mode. We will grab our web viewer and we will integrate right there by dragging a web viewer. The great thing about this is web viewers don't actually need anything in them in order to load a URL. They can load a URL, you can load HTML email, or HTML, you can load HTML, that is either local to your hard drive or from out there on the web. Now the key here, the integration method is to either put the HTML, JavaScript, what have you, directly into the web viewer, what we see on screen right here. You could have code all in this area right up here and that would include everything. The problem is FileMaker's calculation engine right here, being able to input code, text, whatever it is, is limited to 30,000 characters. That limit means that some JavaScript libraries will not be able to fit 100% within the web viewer. So 
there are different ways to integrate JavaScript. You can use a field, you can use a related table with a field, you can use an external file, a file that is exported, you can use text directly in a text block here on the layout put in the visible area or the non-visible area of our layout. That's what we're talking about right here, this divider line. Non-visible area, visible area. So the integration method is really dependent on the developer that created, or I should say implemented, the bundle, that's what they're calling these things, within Carafe. So it's a bundle of resources. Think of it that way. So this bundle of the button plus dialog is what I want to get into my FileMaker database. Now the first thing I should mention is that when you first open Carafe, it is dependent on a freely available plugin. So I'm going to go up to the file, or excuse me, the advanced, and we're going to take a look at the preferences right here. So when we open our preferences, we are going to see in the plugins area right here, that we have already installed the base elements plugin. This is going to be something that is going to be installed by Carafe. I don't know if it goes out because I already had it installed here. I don't know if it goes out and installs or has a local copy that it just installs. But there's one thing that you have to get set up. Let's go back into those preferences. And that is under the plugins area just before you need to have this turned on right there. Allow solutions to install files. Now typically I always advise in turning this off. It's just a security hole that you don't need to have open when you open, if you're learning FileMaker, if you're opening random FileMaker files where you're learning thing, if one of them just decides to install a plugin and you don't know and then that plugin does something, just not a good idea. So you need to temporarily turn this on in the plugins area, open Carafe. Carafe will then install the base elements plugin that we have right there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come back here, you're going to uncheck this box, and then you're going to be done with it. Base elements will be installed, and then you will be able to copy and paste things from the Carafe database into your FileMaker database. So the next stage is the deploy. Let's take a look at that. When we click on deploy, a card window is going to come up, and by the way, you're going to need FileMaker 17 because FileMaker 17 is when they implemented card windows. Uh, if you have an older version of FileMaker, it doesn't mean that this won't work or it's not possible. You can integrate into a copy of a database that's being used for FileMaker 16 and earlier. As long as the web viewer is supported, you will just need to use a copy of FileMaker 17 or higher in order to implement. JavaScript has been available within web viewers as long as FileMaker has had web viewers. So there's a couple of different deployment options, and I won't go through all of them. But the standard deployment is going to copy this. This button right here is what's using the base elements plugin to copy the code that we would put into our FileMaker database over here. The method of implementation here, actually, let's click cancel just before that. We can see right down here, we've got two different options of Windows compatible and offline compatible. So let's talk about those. Offline compatible means that it's going to take the JavaScript and it's going to put that into your FileMaker file. That is because it is possible to have a web viewer and use JavaScript that is referenced out there on the web. I'm sure you've heard of what's called a content delivery network, network or a CDN. Many different JavaScript libraries can simply just be referenced on the web and as long as FileMaker is connected, then it just goes and uses those libraries without having to have them local to the file. However, if, if you know you're deploying down to a device, let's say for an iPad or an iPhone, and it's going to be disconnected, you're going to need to use the offline compatible, which is going to typically take the JavaScript library or whatever JavaScript code is used and put that directly into FileMaker in one of the methods that I explained. Again, up to the developer who implemented the bundle. Windows compatible is a feature or situation where Windows, when it comes to transferring data through a URL, Windows is limited to, I believe, 2,048 characters or something like that. And that's the primary method of passing information between a web viewer using JavaScript and back into FileMaker via a script. 
Windows therefore needs to use a little bit of a hack which uses the clipboard. So know that when you choose this Windows compatible option, there are situations where the clipboard will be used and will be wiped out. So as long as you know that, you can always program around that by preserving the clipboard, saving what's there, using the clipboard within JavaScript, and then putting back whatever you had on the clipboard. Just a little bit of extra development effort. So let's walk through the process of deploying this. I'm not going to choose the standard deployment. I'm going to choose the advanced deployment. It's got a nice little one, two, three in terms of describing what you need to do here. And we will walk through these steps. But before we do that, I want to make mention of what it notes up here in the top of this makes it compatible with FM Web Viewer Bridge. So if you have not heard about the FM Web Viewer Bridge, this was created by Todd Geist using features and functionality that have been uh, evolving over time that allows the web viewer to perform an update, whether it's a data update or a UI update, you click on a button, something moves or something happens, such that it uses a native JavaScript function called on hash change. So if you watched my earlier video uh, talking about JavaScript, you know that there are attributes that you can have in an HTML tag, let's say within an anchor tag that would take you to somewhere on the web. That attribute such as on click means that when you click this, execute some JavaScript. Well, the on hash change means that when the window of the web viewer changes, it will then call another function and just do something else in the same web viewer. And this completely eliminates all web viewer flashing, which is a really great thing to do within FileMaker. And we'll take a look at that in some of the examples. But let's get this into our FileMaker database. Now there are two options right here, development and production. I will talk about development at a later time with regards to how it's used. I believe it's one of the newer features that Jeremiah has put in. He showed it to me, and it's really a great way to test on multiple platforms, in particular Windows, because Windows does not have a JavaScript debugger, and it's very difficult to debug things. The deployment provides some functionality that allows you to deploy and see what's going on on all of the different web viewers in all of your different FileMaker clients, primarily Macintosh and Windows. So let's go for production, and I just click Copy Advanced Script, so I copy that. It's copied to the clipboard now. I'll go ahead and click Done. We will make reference of these, which we can come back in. In fact, I don't even need to click Done right now. It's on my clipboard. I can just switch over to my FileMaker database and just leave that there. So the way that this was copied, and it wasn't super obvious right here, other than reading Copy FileMaker Script to your clipboard. So you didn't copy a layout, you didn't copy um, anything but a single script. So as I go into the scripting workspace where my scripts are empty, I don't have to click the plus because I'm not adding a new script. All I have to do is just command or control V. I'm pasting it because the base elements plugin is used in order to paste in this one single script. Now the way that this works is that the JavaScript is implemented in a single script. That's what makes it portable. It makes it easy to copy and makes it easy to paste. But that's not the only implementation that's possible. You can adapt what's provided within the script in order to make it more permanent, if you will, within your FileMaker solution. But for right now, what I would have to do is I would have to add a button that's going to call this script in order to get this web viewer to do what it's supposed to do. So let's walk through those steps of using that script and we can talk a little bit about how we would adapt and modify the code. Where is the code number one? The JavaScript code primarily is in one place, at least in this one uh, file. And I'm going to presume that it uses roughly the same template for a lot of the other bundles in the Carafe application. It's right here within this one insert text. So as I double click here, and we scroll, we can see that it has all of the JavaScript code. Here is all of our JavaScript, var, param, var, script name, and so on. It is using some of the some of its custom functions. Some of it may be uh, library references. It really depends on the bundle and what is implemented. All of this is going to be all of our CSS. 
We can see that right there. It's just defining things like background color, line heights, etc. So it's basically just a one-stop copy it, paste it, and we're done. We can see that we've got the document type definition. We've got the HTML, the head, and then the body is going to be down there below in the rest of all of this content. There it is. There's the closing tag of the body right there. So if we wanted to copy and use that and it would fit into our web viewer, we could, but of course we could have used the uh, standard deployment over in the um, carafe and just copied that. You're going to have to play with the modules and see how you want to integrate, whether you want to use standard or whether you want to use advanced, but we're going to use advanced. Now this script, as copied from Caraf coming into my FileMaker database, it's going to stop at a given point. We can see right here that we've got this item, integration to do. It's going to show a custom dialog and it's going to exit the script without doing all of the rest of what it needs to do, initializing the web viewer, because these fields come in as red, meaning we need a particular field. So let's go ahead and add that field. Now I've mentioned in a previous video and also in this video that there's multiple ways to integrate JavaScript. And one of the better ways, if you're going to be doing the on hash change or using this, um, I forget what it is over here, the FM Web Viewer Bridge, if you're going to be using that, then exporting the HTML to a folder on the hard drive, typically the temporary space, is the best way to deal with the um, functionality because that's where you can get the on hash changes on that external file and then every time that it's changed the web viewer just simply updates without flashing so in order to do that we're going to go over here i'm probably blocking this or it's right on the other side of my head i'm going to click on the new field or i'm on it uh, hopefully i'm not blocking it but new field i'm just going to call this container and you can see we are going to set this to a container type right there. We have the field and I'm going to drag that out so we can see what happens in terms of the integration. I'm going to choose, I am completely blocking the labels right there, which you saw my mouse go behind me, but here I'm going to drag the container out. So there's one other thing that we need to do in order to get this working, I believe, and that is in order to uh, target this particular web viewer, we definitely need this web viewer to have a name. Now, by default, I believe most of the bundles in Carafe use the term of web. And that's all you have to name it. Now, if you have multiple web viewers on your FileMaker layout, you, of course, can name these whatever you want with regards to initialization. So I believe that's going to be it other than modifying that script. So let's open up the script. We're going to modify these two settings right here where we're going to set our field Let's specify our field right here, selecting our button as the name of my database. Container is what I want. And then right here, I want button again, and I want the same container. And that's really good. I can disable these because those are configuration steps. So I'm going to comment them out with a command slash and save the script. Um, I believe that's all I have to do. Those are the... the small amount of steps that we need to set up in order for the JavaScript to work. Now what we need to do is we need to know how this JavaScript works or we have to be able to interpret what is expected for the JavaScript. Now we can see up at the very top that here is a configuration variable where we can say we want the web viewer rather than being web which we just set it to we could call this whatever we want so it could be uh, web viewer dot button versus web viewer dot chart versus web viewer dot graph whatever it is that you want to use but we're provided here with a script parameter template so i can select all of this because this is our initialization the way that this is implemented nothing is going to happen in this web viewer until it is initialized and there's two ways i could initialize this i could create another script and call this script or I can just put a button on my layout. In order to see how things work, I'm going to put a button on my layout, just a little bit easier to. And I will call it initialize. Now granted, you're probably not going to have a button on your layout called initialize, but this is what is initializing that web viewer. We've given the web viewer the name and I'm just going to pass the parameters. 
So I'll paste in what I copied from the script. The file name I will change to simply get file name as such. The JSON element as an inbound parameter, JSON set element function does not take that right there. I'm going to initialize this to a blank object. And that's just how uh, JSON set element is going to work. Then for script one and script two, you have to think about what it is that you're implementing. If you're implementing a chart, that chart needs data. So you're going to have to get data in. In this case, I'm implementing a dialog that has a yes and a no. Each of those options need to correlate to a script. So what script do I want run when I click on either of those options? And I'll assume that script one is yes and script two is no. In fact, the reason that this doesn't say script one yes and script two no is because you can change the names of those values, which is what we're going to take a look at. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that Caraf does itself in its own database. I'm just going to set up a script called test. And just before we run this, what we're going to see is that there is a security setting that we need to set on a privilege set that's going to use this functionality, otherwise it won't work. So we'll say OK, and what do you think we need next? Well, we need that test script. So this is our button that's going to initialize. Let's put this up in the top header area. Go back to our scripting workspace, go up to our scripts and create a new script. And this one we will simply call test. Now in order to know that we got into this script, we're going to add a step over here. I'm going to put in a show dialog, and then we are going to set this up such that we'll put in hello world, and we'll put in yay, I made it here. And we'll say OK. And that's really all we need. Uh, when we call the script test, we will just basically run a dialog. Now recognize that anything and everything that is in JavaScript, you can take it from JavaScript and pass it as a parameter into your FileMaker script, doing whatever you then want with it, modifying your data, etc. So we've got our test script, we've got our button, or excuse me, our initialization script. I believe everything in the initialization script is all set up. I believe we are ready to initialize and we can take a look at what's going on behind the scenes. So let's close this out, go back into browse mode and see if everything works. And we did not get an initialization, so we need to uh, debug this and find out what is going on in our script. Let's see if we've got this. The web viewer name is web. And that's my problem. I did not name this web. There we go, I must have not tabbed. I did show that, but uh, that didn't stick. One of the parts of being able to troubleshoot and debug within FileMaker, and there's our dialog, is such that we are able to walk through and find all the individual steps of how and where things might break. So we have a click right here, and that click is going to execute within JavaScript calling an FMP script or an FMP URL that's calling a script in order to run the test script. But this is where we get this dialog right here. Your access privileges do not allow you to perform this action. So anytime that you are going to be implementing a JavaScript solution into your FileMaker database, you have to know that you have to go up to the file menu, manage, go to security, and then on the security, on the privilege set, which we have right here, and this is a FileMaker 18 dialog, I click on the edit right here. When we edit the privilege set, and we scroll in and we take a look, it is this option right here, allow URLs to perform FileMaker scripts. Now I'm turning this on currently for the full access privilege set, which is completely fine to do. But recognize, and we'll say admin for our default username, recognize that when you do allow the execution of FMP URLs, that if users can get access to the names of scripts, then they can call those scripts arbitrarily just by running URLs. Meaning I could open a web browser right now, type in FMP, 
and target the database and just target the name of a script. That again is provided I can gain access to the scripts. How would I gain access to the list of scripts? This is just good stuff to know. If I open up the data viewer and I click a new watch variable and I go into the design functions or I happen to know they exist, I have this one right here, script names and we'll just put in a double set of quotes. So you can see right here, it's giving me a list of all of the names. So if you're going to implement uh, the ability to execute F uh, scripts via FMP URL, you have to know that the development environment of FileMaker has been locked down. That means that from a deployment standpoint, the FileMaker option in FileMaker 17 and higher of this right here, use advanced tools, has been disabled from the installation standpoint. Otherwise, if it's just a regular copy of FileMaker and a user can get access to use advanced tools, then you now know as a developer that if I see that I am using a JavaScript or I see I'm in a solution and JavaScript is being run, all I have to do is go over there and create that new watch variable and type in script names and I can just get a list of them and just start to hunt through that and try to get them. Now, of course, the developer ability can be locked down. You can remove admin access, all of those other things. I will leave those for other videos that I've covered or a future video if I have not covered it. I just want you to be aware of what's going on when things are being done within FileMaker. It's my job to teach you. So when we click this now, we get the execution of our script. We have turned on the allow execution of URLs and here is our dialogue, yay, I made it. So what we need to do now, and also you need to recognize right here that this container, what happens is this container is being generated. It's the text that we have right here, the insert text, which is being injected and then pushed out to a path where this web viewer is loading that path. How do you find out what this web viewer is loading? We named this web viewer web. We can always find out what a web viewer is pointing at by using our developer tools, going to our data viewer, going to our watch variables, and you can see right here, I've already put in this right here, our get container attribute, our get layout object attribute. This pointed at web and then rendering what the source is shows us that our source is pointing to a local file. Let's zoom out and zoom back in. A local file on the hard drive in the var folders temp space, FileMaker on the Mac at least, uses uh, this t-s10 plus some random variable. This I believe is generated on startup. But you can see that it is pointing to this HTML file, which was generated and pushed out. Now, of course, you can walk through the debugger in order to see what's happening, but I don't think I need to do that because you can probably do that yourself. What we're going to take a look at is how do I change the values of delete, yes, no, where are they? Well, those are quite clearly within the JavaScript because this is being generated within JavaScript. Also, would be nice if you don't already know, how do I integrate this into the layout and make it such that it blends? Um, we can do that. We'll double click the web viewer. We will leave interaction on, but all of the rest of these, because it is local, we don't need uh, to see the status area and so forth. You can see that the bottom part, after I initialize, is going to be turned off. The rest of what's going on right here is the padding. So we can turn off the padding plus this annoying highlight that by default is part of this theme. So we go into layout mode, we select the web viewer, we go over to our appearance area, click on that. We can see that the uh, padding values are all six, so we'll put them all to zero. And we will go to our... Um, focused state and then we will scroll down to that and we will turn off the outer shadow because we don't want that anymore. We could save this right now, save the style. In fact, let's go ahead and save the changes and then I will save the changes to the theme such that for web viewers, that's what I want to have happen. So now when we initialize, you can see that minus the line, we would be able to blend this directly into our user interface. Let's select this and let's get rid of our line and we'll just copy this for the normal state and just apply it to all of the other states. Hover and focused. There we go. 
Save changes and save changes. Never want to have red triangles on these if you can avoid it. So other than making the background color roughly the same, we can see if, if it's not on the video that this is just a subtly light, uh, darker color, I would be able to match this directly so that the blend looks like this is just part of FileMaker and I get all of the rich, good, yui, gooey goodness of JavaScript. But let's take a look at where that delete is. This is a developer trick that when you want to find something quickly, you use your search feature. Now, unfortunately, by default, FileMaker does not have a built-in search feature. FileMaker engineers and developers, please focus on the IDE as well as features, please. But it is being solved by a freely available plugin called the MBS plugin. So you can see that I've got this MBS search right here. This is not by default in a copy of FileMaker, but if you go get the MBS plugin from monkeybreadsoftware.com, com.net. I don't know. I forget which one it is. Let's look at our plugin, see if it's right there for us. Uh, see if the configure will show us. Nope. Uh, we could say release notes. That will open it right there. All right. So there is the URL, monkeybreadsoftware.com. This is a free plugin that you can uh, download. And you don't, uh, although I would buy it, it is a extremely, extremely valuable plugin. Uh, for being able to do anything that FileMaker cannot do. But that provides us with our search. I don't know that delete, when I search for this specific word of delete, it's always whatever you're seeing on screen, you just search for that within your code to find out where it is. There's always a reference somewhere, and then that reference will reference back to where the core code is that shows you how to do things. So if I put in delete, I'm not going to find it because it's searching through these steps, which means I need to go to the next step, which is I would go in here, select all of this, since I don't have I don't have a find. I do have a find. Look at that. FileMaker does have a find. Let's put in delete and see if we can find it within here. And if we can't, I will just go find it on my own. That, that find actually may be working as a part of the monkey bread plugin. If your native copy of FileMaker does not bring up a search, then uh, that's probably not part of FileMaker, it's part of the monkey bread plugin. And I don't know if this works on Windows as well. Um, there we go. <laughs> I, I don't know why, oh, I clicked done. Silly me, I don't want that. I want this right here to go to the next instance. It is right here within this. So. Of course, if I want this code to use values other than yes, no, and delete, I'm going to have to merge that text in. How would I do that? Well, let's take a look at this. First off, let's put in our own placeholders. Um, let's call this. Now, when it comes to placeholders and HTML, you can always use, uh, I think we would be uh, fine with this, um, default. Let's just do the one right there. And let's copy this. We'll copy that and just see if we can get a nice initialization here. So insert text. This is inserting text. Let's see where it's inserting text to. Target. That is our target right there. It is inserting text into this variable HTML template. So now let's go swap those values out. We're doing a substitution here. So we'll click cancel. And right after this, we will actually, I'll put this right here and I'll duplicate it and I'll move it right up there underneath that one. And we will call this one HTML template, which is right there. And I am going to click specify. Let's make this dialog a little bit smaller. Click specify and I am going to put in, I believe, there we go. There's, I'm pasting my default. So let's put in our substitute. Substitute. So what are we going to substitute? We're going to substitute the HTML template. What are we going to look for? We're going to look for our placeholder. And what would we replace this with? Whatever we want. That can obviously come from a field. It can come from your data, from a script, you name it. Uh, we're basically injecting that right into the script. So that little ad right there, and this could do multiple substitutions right here. You can have your template, swap in your placeholders, put these in, and your initialization is now going to say whatever we want. So we've saved a script. Let's initialize again. There we go. 
it is whatever we want from wherever we want. So what we have now is something that is really pretty cool that we didn't have to spend a whole lot of time doing. This bundle was created by somebody. They went out, they integrated the JavaScript library. If there is one, they uh, took care of the CSS. Of course, if we wanted this to look and match our theme, we would need to modify the CSS. But we have all of the ability to go in and tweak whatever we want. This background color, as long as you're willing to learn uh, the word background and color, can easily be found right there within that code. I can, of course, match my FileMaker background to this background or the reverse. Just like we did the first time, we just go do a find, type in background, and type color. It just happens to be background-color, and there it is right there. Let's get our RGBA, uh, RGBA values, change them, and we're good to go. And there's plenty of tools that will do this for you. So the integration using Carafe is really simple and straightforward. Let's take a look as, a, as part of our wrap up at some of the examples and the bi-directional nature of what we have over there in that uh, example database. Let's close our window here. Uh, our example of being able to interact with some of these different options. And what was it? It was the... FM Web Viewer Bridge. I keep forgetting the name of that. It's basically just a framework that allows JavaScript to use the on hash change event in order to update the web viewer without having to get the flashing. So let's take a look at our examples and then wrap this video up. All right, so what can you do with JavaScript? Pretty much anything. And everything that you could ever want to do that FileMaker is not going to be able to do natively. As we can see here on screen, I've got this Google map that loads with the ability to click on uh, these indicators, which drill down. This has all been done for me. I don't have to do this. I just go to the Google Maps part, copy it from Carafe, put it into my FileMaker solution, and then supply it with the data. And hopefully, as a result of this video, you've learned how easy it is to go supply it with data. You just have to put your get your data in the right format. Many times, that's going to be in a JSON format. So learn JSON. It's pretty straightforward and easy. Data tables. Uh, let's go with objects. So data tables, when I click here, uh, carafe. Oh, this is a the examples is attempting to call the carafe file, which it's not able to do, which I would be able to see the example in carafe as well. In fact, let's switch over to uh, open carafe and take a look over there. I believe they have all of the exact uh, exact same examples that they have here, but it's wired up to target the carafe file. Um, let's go to um, what are we on right here? We're on data tables. So over here, we've got data tables. Scroll down. I don't, there's data tables objects right there. So we click on it, and there we go. You can see that we've got a script parameter coming in with all of the JSON variables of the extension, the name, the office, etc. Really pretty cool. I've shot a previous video about data tables. If you want to know how to do a direct integration of that, just use the search feature on FileMaker Magazine and you'll find data tables. But again, how easy is it that if I want to use data tables, you could go watch my video, but you can also just click deploy, let's say standard deployment, and just say copy. Done. Go paste it, modify the variables, and data tables is in. You supply the data, and it's ready to go. It's really, really pretty quick and easy. Uh, deployment is nice. Uh, take a look over here. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of the examples. I will let you do that. Of course, you can uh, take the time. They've got uh, charting. They've, I mean, these charts. Look at how the interactiveness of the chart I mean, once you get into D3 charting, you can do pretty much limitless all kinds of stuff. That's really pretty cool. Uh, calendars, um, being able to, you should be able to drag these. There's a calendar that you can. But ultimately, what we're looking at is we are looking at the advancement from just putting the JavaScript in to working with um, something that is more constant, so or something that can be interacted with. Um, we'll call FileMaker scripts, but the web viewer will just update real time. So that's what we're taking a look at right now. These, this file Carafe examples has an implementation of the FM web viewer bridge. 
So when I click on this F, uh, this hello, it is taking a value, actually it's taking it from the preferences right here of the username, and it's injecting that right here. So that's where it's getting my name from. And then there's goodbye, but you can see that as I click, this is just adding to this list, but the web viewer itself as a whole is not refreshing. There are some really awesome things that you can do once you integrate your data with charts, such that there are D3 uh, charts that when you click on them, the whole chart just moves and visually is just so appealing and so buttery that you can never get within FileMaker, which makes sense why FileMaker is going to head more in a direction of this bi-directional JavaScript. Why would you not take advantage of pre-existing code that allows you a extremely high degree of leverage? Well, you would. And with this, and within future versions of FileMaker, doing all of this rich UI goodness Taking advantage of exi existing libraries and bundles is going to be something that is just so easy to do. But yet you still need to understand how it works under the hood. You need to have the confidence in order to be able to go in and rewire things up and at least change things up. So you don't have to be a, fi a JavaScript developer, but you do have to be a JavaScript integrator and be comfortable enough to know where to change things so that it works for your solution. So I hope with this video you've gotten a better sense of what's possible with JavaScript. Of course, with Carafe, you're going to be able to integrate whatever is currently here. If you're a JavaScript developer, any bundles that you create, if you will read the documentation and the specs that Carafe uses, there is also the, I forget what it's called, um, but I just met the developer at DevCon, Carson. Hi to you, but he created the Widget Studio. I believe that's the name, but it's offered by Geist Interactive. You can go take a look at that. It's somewhat similar to Carafe, wherein Carafe provides you with these bundles, but Widget Studio just goes a little bit beyond and it provides a configuration area or a configurator that allows you to configure the JavaScripts that you're going to use, especially JavaScripts that have a lot of specifics, such as colors that you want to use, like on the uh, Google map. Let's say, for example, I wanted to use pink and purple. Well, I need to go into the JavaScript to do that, whereas the Widget Studio by uh, Geist Interactive provides the configurator where you just basically select the colors you want it. Then you also click deploy. And both of these teams are doing a really good job on coordinating with standards. Uh, they are creating a standardized format so that both Carafe and Widget Studio, as far as I'm aware, provide you with the same underlying functionality in terms of deploying your JavaScript. It's just that if you want more features and functionality, Widget Studio is currently going to give them to you. Otherwise, go open source with Carafe that we have right here. So much luck to you and your FileMaker development. And until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.